After being cancelled by SOAS School of Law, I have come to a clear understanding that there is no freedom of speech in the Western academia when it comes to criticizing LGBT propaganda, but only freedom of silence. I am a professor of public law in Ankara. I had done my education in the UK and in the United States, and I also spent some time in Belgium for academic reasons. It all started um, with, a, with a Facebook post by an, uh, by an academic in Turkey, and on the day of uh, Children's Day, on, on Children's Day, she uh, posted on Facebook promoting transsexuality to children. And I replied in a very short and kind way and said that promoting sexuality to children is an offense according to the Turkish law and transsexuals and homosexuals are not exempt from that. And then uh, this academic whom I had known personally as well immediately blocked me on Facebook and I was really upset. I wrote an article uh, criticizing this attitude and saying that why are we not allowed to communicate on LGBT issues. And I wrote another article uh, which I delved into the subject even uh, deeper. In the first article, I uh, criticized the attitude of not being able to communicate on LGBT issues except uh, for uh, uh, taking side with the dominant discourse. And in the second article, I compared some laws in different countries. And it was not a fixed statement, but it was rather a call for discussion. I said, why can't we even discuss it? And after that, in these two articles, I really became a target for attacks. And these attacks were um, mainly on my uh, academic and my vocational and my public image. And I, I really got some nasty messages and attacks, and I was called homophobic. I was called, uh, I was called narrow-minded. I was called bigot. I was, I was called all sorts of nasty and negative things. They contacted all my institutions abroad, all my alma mater, which is Indiana University, Harvard University, and then University of London uh, School of Oriental and African Studies, and finally uh, the Catholic University of Louvain, in the French-speaking part of Belgium. The uh, School of Oriental and African Studies had my profile on the law school page for more than 10 years with my photo and my testimony uh, to advertise the school and how good it is. But just upon the slanders that they had received, they immediately removed my profile without even contacting me, without asking anything. By the way, my articles were in Turkish. Uh, there's no way that they could easily understand it. And it was also a sophisticated uh, piece. It was not an attack, it was not some, uh, some uh, cheap dialogue. And they immediately removed my profile and I contacted the dean of the school and I asked, why did you do that without even contacting me? And in law, you are a law school and in law, yeah, we believe in the value of due process. And the dean replied and said that these people, meaning LGBT, are so vulnerable uh, that we have to protect them so much that you can't even comment on them in any way. I said, well, uh, in this situation, they are not vulnerable. I am the one who is vulnerable because I'm not even listened to. And you, they, their slander is more effective my, than my uh, truthful and honest and fair uh, stance. Uh, so I couldn't really persuade him. And uh, so I basically, I was canceled. I was canceled. It's my school is a precious school. It's, it's, it's a very special environment in terms of diversity also. Uh, but diversity, the spirit of diversity has been uh, has been damaged so badly by LGBT radicalism. And by LGBT radicalism, I mean, I don't refer to the lifestyle of LGBT individuals, but I refer to the public attitude of the activists 
uh, that doesn't leave any space for discussion and debate. We live in a time of freedom of speech, or we claim so, but when it comes to LGBT, uh, we are forced to agree uh, with everything they do. In academia, most, uh, not even most, almost all projects must be somehow related to LGBT rights. And that can be understandable to some extent in social sciences. Uh, but even in engineering, uh, even in physical sciences, in natural sciences, they want you to relate your study subject to LGBT in some way or another. And it shows that it is not a really an authentic movement, but it is really pushed hard in the academia. They even changed the name of the school. Now, the, the new name of the school is SOAS School of Law, Gender and Media. Western academia is not free anymore. When it comes to LGBT, Western academia is not free at all. In the UK, in Europe, and in the United States, uh, the universities in this respect look uh, like an occupy, occupied land. There is a good example uh, from the University of Sussex. There was this professor called Kathleen Stock, and uh, she was an active person in the LGBT movement as, as a lesbian, and she made some comments about the transgender attitude and their uh, social stance. And just for that, even though she was one of them, she was cancelled and she had to resign uh, from her post at university. That shows that even small divergences within the LGBT community is not tolerated. And I actually uh, have this experience through my students who are, who are part of the LGBT community. And they say that LGBT discourse and LGBT attitudes are so dictatorial, so authoritarian and totalitarian, that even they are not tolerated in the community if they think even in a slightly different way. At my school, SOAS, there are so many groups and it is a perfect place for diversity, as I said before, uh, but only one flag was put at the top of SOAS main building, which was the LGBT flag. I mean, all the remaining groups had to, had to spend time, had to be under the dominance of LGBT. That is not fair. I mean, variety is valuable when there is equality. If, if one group dominates over the others, if one group dominates the discourses and approaches in universities and outside universities in society, then we can't really talk about uh, the free society and free universities anymore.